Hey, what's up everybody? I hope you're having an amazing day so far. I'm your host Phil, and today's video, I wanna show you the external control feature with the Tonix pedal and how I'm using it in order to make an instant move or switch between a rhythm and the lead tone. Let's roll that intro clip and then let's talk a little bit about it more in detail. All right, thank you so much for tuning in. In today's video, I wanna show you a really cool feature which I recently discovered on the Tonix pedal, which is the external control, which allows you to change parameters on the fly or with an expression pedal and so on and so forth. We're gonna dive into that a little bit deeper at a later point in time, but I first wanna to explain to you what the external control actually is, how it works, you know, like from a general perspective, then I wanna give you a little bit of a background why I'm so stoked about this feature and how it helped me to massively downsize my board. And in the final section, I'm gonna show you a full-fledged how to set up tutorial, how I'm using it for basically rhythm and lead tone switching. Now the external control on the Tonix pedal is basically a TRS jack on the connection hub on the back of the Tonix pedal where you can plug in different types of pedals or foot switches in order to change settings. Now, you can use either expression pedals, you can use dual switches, or you can use single switches. The switches are at all times latching switches. We're not talking about tapping switches over here. What can you do with the dual switches? When you have dual switches, you can roll through or scroll through different or through the presets and the banks, depending on how you set this up. So you can basically use not only these three buttons over here on the Tonix, which you have, but you can actually scroll through them as if you would be using the preset scroll um, button on the Tonix pedal itself, but via foot. With the expression pedal, you can choose or you can choose some parameters on the Tonix pedal, which you can then assign to the expression pedal. For example, you can make a volume swell or you can make a volume gain swell. So you have multiple parameters which you can, you know, set up to the heel or to the toe position. And then you have via the sweep of the expression pedal, you have a smooth transition, a seamless transition between status A and status B. With the single switch, which I got over here, you can do something very similar to what the expression pedal can do. You can switch between status A and status B, but instantly. And this is how I'm using my single switch over here. I'm using this to basically switch between a high gain rhythm tone and a high gain lead tone. Let me quickly do some small settings on my Tonix pedal and then I'm gonna demonstrate this to you. So right now, um, let me activate my camera over here. <coughs> so right now I'm running on preset A and my core sound is my high gain rhythm tone. <laughs> So it's a dry 5150 boosted sound. And when I'm pressing this foot switch over here, I'm getting a lead sound. You know, I have like a mid bump, I have a reverb, the noise gate set up a little bit different. The model volume is a little bit louder. So this is really cool um, in order to kind of switch between two different sounds or, you know, like lead rhythm or clean rhythm, something like that. And the cool thing is it's absolutely seamless. So when you usually use preset navigation on the Tonix pedal, you have like a small volume cutoff. I'm gonna demonstrate this shortly. I'm gonna deactivate this over here and I'm gonna move between A and C. So you can always hear that small volume cutoff as soon as I'm switching the presets. With this over here, with the external control setting, you're not having these volume dropouts. So this is perfect for what I want to use it for, you know, doing that lead tone, which basically is the core tone 
with just a few additions over here. All right, let me put away the guitar and let me explain why this massively helps me out <coughs> and why this basically saved up these pedals, which you can see over here. So I used to run this pedal board over here with all of the stuff which is on this pedal board as well as these pedal boards over here. Granted, I still had a little bit of free space over here, but let me show you a different pedal board which I got ready, which is the same size as this new pedal board over here, so that you can compare the sizes. Hopefully that's becoming apparent. That's a big difference, especially when you're touring, um, when every cubic centimeter counts, you know, like when you're driving by car, and you have all the merch with you and you have two guitars and you have this and that and that. So this is really super cool and it's way more lighter than this pedal board over here because I could spare some of my heaviest pedals. Now, how could I spare my pedals over here? My lead tone, my basic difference between rhythm and lead tone is consisting of time-based effects together with EQ. So I got my normal rhythm tone and what I just simply do when I do a solo boost, I just boost it via the EQ. So I have a certain EQ frequency set up and I boost a little bit the volume and I add a delay to it. When I do the compromise in the Tonics pedal then I'm using reverb instead of the delay, I can skip the delay. If I'm doing the changes via the um, EQ knobs in the Tonics, I can skip the EQ. If I do the compromise and use the integrated Tonix noise gate instead of this super duper awesome noise gate, I love this, the ISP Decimator G-String 2, best noise gate on the planet. Um, but if I still go with the compromise of using the integrated Tonix noise gate, which is decent, does the job, but not as good as this one, but still does the job, I can also skip this one. This pedal and the delay are really heavy pedals. And for activating the EQ and delay at once, I previously had this um, this um, looper over here, which also had a splitter integrated, which I made by myself. So I could also spare this because I don't need the looper anymore. Everything is contained within the Tonix and the Tonix also has two outputs. So I don't need the splitter function of this anymore. So I could save these pedals and downsize my board massively by only using the external control in order to flick you know my uh, lead channel sound on and off which is huge for me i really really love this feature over here i really dig it um yeah let me let me pull over the um webcam picture so that it's a little bit bigger and then let's get into the let's say tutorial on how to set this up. I'm gonna push the microphone a little bit to a different spot over here so that you hopefully can hear me a little bit better. All right, we can now see the board in its full glory. I'm gonna explain short the signal path so that you understand what, what's going on over here. I'm going from my wireless system into my wah. Wah goes into the Tonix. The Tonix has two outputs, one is going through a line isolator into the power amp, which is not currently turned on. And the other output is going into the more radar, the IR loader, and that goes into the DI box. And the signals, which you just heard of my guitar, those are the, um, or those were the um, tonics from the more radar IR loader into my audio interface. And this over here is just a super, super simple, um, latching switch which is normally open i'm going to explain what that means in a moment and that is connected to the expression or no so sorry to the external control of the tonics now before we dive into the settings of the tonics let's talk about normal open and normal closed um i got this patch cable already prepared we always uh, got the sleeve and the tip over here so on a normal open switch what happens is that by default you have no connection between sleeve and tip. And as soon as you press the switch, what you're doing is you're just connecting the sleeve to the tip. Nothing else is happening in this pedal. And in fact, if I would take this cable over here, this patch cable, and plug it into the external control, 
I could still, you know, plug on and off my lead tone by just simply using these crimps over here. A normally closed switch, on the other hand, has as a default status that it's closed, so we have a connection between sleeve and tip. And then, whenever you press the button, or you turn it actually on, as a matter of fact, you open the circuit. The cool thing about Tonix is, it can work with both together, depending, or with, it can work with both uh, different switch types, depending on what you set up. <coughs> Sorry, and that's what we're gonna explore right now. So, what you wanna do is, you wanna go over here to the model knob and press this longer so that you have preset, but then you wanna go to the global setup, go into that menu, and then navigate to the external control. In this over here, you have, for example, NO switch, you have RTS XP, uh, TRS XP, and so on and so forth. What does that mean? Because that is confusing if you don't know what's going on. With this menu, you are basically telling the Tonex what kind of pedal you are gonna plug into the um, external control. We're not using expression pedals, and we're not using dual switches. So, we are using switches, but what we're using normally open switches. So I'm gonna choose that option and we're good to go. Next up, you go back so that we'll have the choice between global and preset setup. Go into preset setup, and then you have two different settings which are relevant for you. Ext control and ext learn. Ext control basically just gives you the possibility to turn on or off the external control functionality. We're gonna leave it on for now. Let's move back and let's go to the external learn menu. Over here, you have the possibility to learn and you have the possibility to clear. We want to learn things. And what we want to learn, that's what we're, that's what we're gonna do right now. You enter that menu and now you have this setup over here where the light is flashing. These are, you know, solid, uh, you know, these are solid on. And you have learn A standing over here. Fret not, don't worry. What the pedal now is asking you is, give me the configuration which you want to have as setting A. In my case, I want to have my setting A being exactly like my core sound, you know, the core dry high gain sound, which I uh, played through. The only thing which I wanna now take special care of is that I have absolutely no reverb turned on. Wanna make sure that that's turned off. And just to be extra secure, I wanna set my reverb mix to zero. That way I'm super, super safe. The reason for that, I'm gonna show you in a moment. There's a small bug on the Tonix in regard of reverb when learning. Everything else is supposed to stay the way it is. Now, if I wanna save the settings for learning A, I have to press the B button. So for A, I'm pressing the B button. Now we are learning stuff for B. Now comes the moment where I'm gonna change all the parameters to how I need them for my lead tone. Just gonna do that quite quickly over here. We're gonna stay with the alt. I wanna have the noise gate threshold to be a little bit higher than usual. Uh, sorry, a little bit lower than usual. Wanna have the presence a little bit lower. I wanna have the depth a little bit bigger than usual. Uh, yeah, threshold, we already had that one. Compressor we're not touching. Reverb, I wanna have a reverb mix of 8%, that's kind of my my go-to. Next up, I'm gonna take the alt uh, um, parameters away and I'm now gonna set up the EQ. So I wanna have a big mid bump. I wanna have a little bit less treble. I wanna have a little bit less bass, just to kind of, you know, pronounce that mid frequency. I wanna have a little bit more gain, actually. So I usually go with 4.4, .4 3.9, somewhere in that range. I just want to go with, let's go with 5.1 for this. Okay, now I got the EQ setting set up. The cool thing is that in both Learn A and Learn B, you can also use the parameter knobs 
in order to set stuff like the reverb. I want to have that on. Um, reverb type, plate, time. So I already know my settings by heart by now because I have done this so often, for, especially for this video. Um, yeah, so I know exactly what I have to set up over here. But that's not the worst thing to know what exactly what your settings are. You know, if you have to set them up in the fly, you know, that's cool. You can always get on and model volume. That's an important one for me because I usually make sure that all my rhythms are always at model volume eight so that for my leads, I still have a little bit of headroom so I can go to 10. All right. As soon as I set up everything, I have to press on the C button. Now, if you have set up every, anything wrong, for example, oh, you set up the gain wrong, don't press on the back button. The back button will go out of the learning process completely and you have to redo everything. So make sure that you just set up your stuff over here in this row. Okay, however, I have finished everything for B. So now I have to press C, remember? Saving A, you press on B, saving B, you press on C. So it's kind of like, a, you know, you go through this path over here and once you have reached the green one, you're golden. Okay, let's press on C then. Now my settings are saved and this is the strange bug which I'm talking about when it comes to reverb. Let me demonstrate this. I think, I think the reverb should now be on even on my Learn A. You can hear that. But only one time flicking, flicking back and forth, you know? So that's a little bit strange. Or hang on, hang on. I think I know why this is the case. I think it stays in preset B first until I move somewhere around and then it goes back to A. Okay, that would make sense. Now, one thing which is super important is make sure that you save your preset because right now we have the amber light which indicates that we have done changes. If you would go to another preset and back, you would lose all the configurations which you made. So go ahead and save your stuff. And now you're golden to switch back and forth. And now, got the dry tone. <laughs> All right, now let me put back the guitar. No, let me actually keep the guitar because you're now basically done. You have already done everything which you want to do with the external control. Everything is set up. You're golden to go. However, I want to give you one more tip on your way out, which is quite important. If you don't know about it, it can be very frustrating. The setting which you have done now on the external control learn setting, that's immune to changes. What I mean by that is, let, let's imagine that I'm not satisfied with this tone anymore, but instead I wanna have a tone which has far less gain. Let's push it like to the extremes so that we can hear the difference, you know, like 0 0.5. You know? Okay, so not a desirable tone, but gets a job done to showcase what I mean. Now, even if I go ahead and I save this into my preset over here, I still have my tone. But if I move now back and forth, I will have again my high gain tone, which I set up when I learned. And there is no way for me within the learn A and learn B process to change the settings no matter what I'm doing. I'm basically stuck with these things. So once I once I have to recalibrate things, um, I'm basically, I have to relearn everything. So even if I go ahead and I wanna say, okay, for this gig, I just wanna have my setting A to have this gain. And then you move over here. 
you have the lead tone, but as soon as you move back, you will have your high gain tone again. So just keep in mind that it's kind of a set it and don't touch it again thing, the external control. I personally find that very useful, to be honest, because I don't want to be messing around with my settings. You know, once they are set, I want to keep them that way they are, you know, like fully confidentially, uh, confident uh, going on stage and knowing that my sound will be the same. And even if I do like this, well, oops, uh, I did change everything. Oh, well, now what? Okay, I just press double on this. And I'm good to go, you know? So even if I do like all of this, you know, <laughs> doing crazy stuff over here, I mean, the volume that has to be on 10, you know? The... So, okay, now right now I have nothing set up properly, but just click on this and you're good to go. Or, you know, just set up strange stuff and just press one preset away, go back, you're golden. In case you want to free up the preset and really change something, what you can do is you can disable the external control and that will basically free up your preset again to do changes. Let's go back and let's go now to our low gain setting again. If I'm saving this now, oh, hang on, let's go there. If I save this now, and move back and forth. I'm keeping my low gain setting, but I'm losing the capability of using the external control. No more lead boost. But the cool thing is, if I go back to external control and turn it on and save my preset again, look what happens when I go back and forth. My learned presets are kind of on the back burner and it can just simply recall them back into the preset. This is super useful if you have like your core tone, which you don't want to have basically touched at all. And you just want to, you know, you want that as a reference tone. You can always kind of pull that out back from the external control bank. Oh, hang on. Okay. Uh, I personally find that super useful, actually. There are people which are, rightfully so, because it does not fit their scenario, they are annoyed by this, but I think this is a really cool feature. I think we're done, yeah? I think that's all I can tell you about the external control. I mean, for me, this is uh, this is super awesome. I, <laughs> super awesome. I mean, I could, I could downsize my board, I now have a smaller board, I have all the capabilities which I would like to have in the Tonex. Um, I have a full-fledged understanding of what's going on, which is really, really cool. Yeah, I dig it. Um, I hope that you could extract something out of this video and learn something about your Tonex pedal and the ex external control. If you have done so, I would absolutely appreciate if you would like, share videos, subscribe to the channel, and uh, most importantly, let me know in the comments if this actually helped you out, if you want to see other tutorials in this style, um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm, I love showing, showing gear and stuff, but I also like very much to explain stuff. And I hope that I'm doing a good job at this. So um, yeah, <sighs> what else to say then, other than uh, thank you everybody for watching. I super, super appreciate everybody checking out the channel, checking out the videos. And yeah, see you in the next video. And until then, keep it metal.